For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is, con is condemned already, because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten Son. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And in Luke 19, make sure you know I'm quoting from the Bible here, not man. Luke 19, Luke 16, and in Luke 16, the rich man died and was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Hell is real. God is real. Death is real. In the realm of the Bible, what many believe is not real is real. And the loving God that gave his only begotten son, that we may have eternal life. That same holy God will cast you off into hell, into the flame that torments, because you will not believe on the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be saved. Religion is one of the population of hell. Religion goes to hell. Christians go to be with the Lord. And let's get the word Christian understanding by the Bible and not the media. A Christian is not a church organization. A Christian is one that has put his faith and his trust upon the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried and he arose again the third day according to the scriptures and with the heart. Man believes on the righteousness. Christianity is not Mary. Christianity is not going to church, is not giving money, but is your faith and trust from your heart that Jesus is able to save your soul and wash away your sins. The Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. And the fact is that God is loving. But the other side of the coin is God is holy. God requires holiness and righteousness to get to heaven. And when the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, you're not going to make it to God without Jesus Christ. You can say all the prayers you want. You can eat Jesus all you want. You can have all the feast days you want. But if you do not have Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will die like that rich man, and you will enter into the flame of hell. And that is what Jesus said. So when you say that Jesus never preached hell, and you open a, lead, a red letter Bible to Luke chapter 16, as this Bible has, it's in red lettering. Hell is in red by the words of Jesus Christ, the loving God that gave 
gave his only begotten son and to enter into hell is a contradiction to God's love. The Bible says God's long suffering is not willing that any should perish. All right, not willing that any should perish. Our opening verse is, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish. God's not willing that any should perish. That man in hell perished. Most, a lot of our garbage goes into a fire and is burned for energy. What's that? Yes, I am. And you not doing what God has told you to do to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to perish. When your milk has passed expiration, it has perished. It's a perishable item. You will throw it out. It's no more good. And friend, if your soul is not washed by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, and in, when your death date comes, and you die without Christ, you are as that foul, old, stenching, hard milk. And all you do with it, you just throw it out. You perish. And that is the loving God. That is the holy God. God said, be holy, for I am holy. And yet God says to man, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. Jesus will say, depart from me that work iniquity, I never knew you. You got a problem. Because you may think you're going to heaven. You may think you're good enough. You may think that you please God. You may think that God is so happy with you. And the Bible say opposite of what you believe. You are not so good. You are a sinner that is short of the glory of God, and that shortness is Jesus Christ. You need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I don't think I saw you two, three times I came here. Yeah, we've been here every week. The holy, loving God. I saw you last week. We'll put that. you into hell. You will go into hell by the loving, holy God if you refuse Jesus Christ as your Savior. Thank you. And don't think otherwise. We come up short, the Bible. The King James 1611 Bible that I hold in my hand says all have sinned. You can't enter in before God a sinner. It's impossible. And when Jesus out of his own mouth says, apart from me that work iniquity, that's not going to get you into heaven. And what must you do to be saved is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You will join the multitudes in hell with your religion. You will join the multitudes of hell being a good person. You will join the multitudes of people that have given to your favorite charity. What you will not find in hell is a Bible-believing Christian that has been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ that has been born again. You will not find that in hell. You will not find God and Jesus Christ in hell. You will find your God in hell, Satan, Lucifer, which ventures himself out into religions. 
You see, Satan falls under many names. And some of the names of Satan that people follow are Baptist, Catholic, Lutheranism, Charismatic, Muslim, Jewish. These are names of Satan who tries to deceive people. They, if you were to join this congregation, you'd be fine, dandy, and you're not. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no room for religion in heaven. There will be no Baptists in the walls of New Jerusalem. There will be no Catholic churches before the throne of God. Islam will not be heard or known about. But those who have been washed by Jesus Christ, those who have trusted the Lamb of God to take away their sins, those will walk and worship before God the Creator and Jesus Christ the Son. You must forget that you are good because the Bible says there is none that doeth good. And yet you defy the Bible by thinking, oh, look how good I am. And my question is, by what standard, by what rule? Yours? I can grab any ten of you right now and have you put on a piece of paper, describe to me what good is. And I will get ten different answers. I guarantee. And based upon those ten people and what good is, well, how do you decide if you're good enough to get to God? When ten people have ten different ideas about good. I'll tell you how to get to God. Jesus said, I am the way. There is no other way. I don't care what you think. God doesn't care what you think. God never asks for your opinion. He has set the standard in His Son. And in His Son is salvation. And no other. So the definition of God for good is Jesus Christ. Now you are not good if you have not matched the identity and the character of Jesus Christ. And even I have fallen. If you were to put me against Jesus Christ, I'm unrighteous, I'm vile, and I'm wicked. And the only holiness I have, and only the righteousness that I have, the only goodness that I have is I have put my faith, I have put my trust into Jesus Christ. God has imputed my life into Jesus Christ. He has written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, by the blood of Jesus Christ, by my faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And there is nothing else that I have done to earn salvation but by Jesus. I do not preach Jesus to get brownie points with God. There is no standard. If you preach 52 weeks out of the year, God will give you no. Absolutely not. The Bible says, go ye in the world and preach the gospel. Preach what you have believed. Live what you preach. Do what Jesus Christ has commanded you to do. Preaching does not get you into an entrance into heaven. Because when you read the epistle to the Corinthians that Paul writes, Paul tells us that there are Satan ministers out there in the pulpit. They're not going to heaven. And great chances are that that television person you listen to will not be in heaven either. It's by the blood and not by money. 
It is by Jesus Christ and not how many likes you get. It is salvation by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone outside of nothing else. You're not good enough. You're not righteous enough. And that's what the Bible says. Romans chapter 3. 310, 320, 323. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with your heart. Romans 10, 9 and 10. We stand here preaching Jesus. We do not have a telephone number going across my chest. We do not have an offering. You come to us, we will open the Bible and show you what God says you need to do to be saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not going to tell you to believe on the church. We're not going to tell you to give money. We're going to tell you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Amen. Anybody else with any other doctrines or doctrine of hell? You are on the road to hell. And you may have deceived enough to say, I'm okay. I've got a preacher, I've got a priest, I've got a rabbi. Sounds like a joke coming. And they all walk into hell one day and say, hey, I thought we were safe. Jesus. Why are we here? Why are we in this place of torment? Did we not preach to the people? Did we not give them flowery messages and bunnies and trunk or tree or VBS? Didn't we give the people what they wanted? Depart from me that work in iniquity, I never knew you. But Jesus... I am Dr. Such and Such. Well, there's a rich man in hell with no name. Take your doctorate and go to hell. Depart from me, workers that work in iniquity. But I had the biggest church. Yeah, you're going to the biggest church, hell. Salvation is not attendance. Salvation is not money. Salvation is not how good you are. Salvation is in the Lord Jesus Christ and them alone. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, that's God, except by Him. And you're going to tell God, God, look at these beads. Look at these beads. God says, they're beads, so what? It's not Jesus. Well, God, your son's a meanie. Your son, oh, he's... We're coming to you, God, by his mother, Mary. And in the final words of Mary, whatsoever my son saith, do it. And Jesus says to believe on him as the way, the truth, and the life. So Mary's commandment to you is to do what Jesus said, not what she says. Religion is a tool of Satan to make you feel secure as much as a sugar pill or a placebo. Pop this placebo. Oh, I feel great. Show up to church Sunday morning. Oh, I feel so holy. And then you realize that that medication wasn't really medication. It was just a tic-tac. And then you realize that religion's only religion is not approved by God, but by then. You, you learn too late. The Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Simple. There is no certificate that comes with that.
you may be able to call yourself Christian. But even Christian, the word, has been diluted and polluted by people who are not Christians. So the Bible sets forth, well, who are you to be? And Jesus said, ye must be born again. You were born wrong. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when you come short of the glory of God, and if that shortness is not filled by Jesus Christ and the gospel, that he suffered and died and was buried and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures, when you fall short without Jesus, you fall off into a place called hell. No Jesus, no eternal life. John said, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God, the wrath of God is hell. Even John the Baptist preached on hell. It's too bad your preacher doesn't. Look back at the archives of your preacher's sermons. And when was the last time you got a hell fire message? And yet, I'm glad that you come here every Saturday morning to hear a hellfire message. And there is a hell, and in hell there is a fire. And the loving God will put you into hell if you reject Jesus Christ. Now, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, you die. And the Bible says at death, you are absent from this body and present with the Lord. And when you, you're saved and you pass on to eternity, you will get a new body. You will not ever have pain in eternity. You will not suffer in eternity. You will have no more tears in the eternity. All things are forgotten. All things are made new in the eternity. But you're not going to make that eternity without Jesus Christ. With Jesus Christ as your Savior. You will go to an eternity and pain will be erased in the eternity. Without Jesus Christ, you will die and go into eternity, into hell, where the man in hell said torments for all eternity. Jesus, no pain, hell. Without Jesus, pain, torment, flame, fire, forever. Hell is so wicked and bad that God doesn't even call it light. He that has not the sun shall not see light. Cover your ears as much you will have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Such childness. Hey, hey, hey. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Foolishness. Stupidity without Jesus Christ. And you'll wake up in hell and according to the Bible you will not want to come back and get saved. You want your family to get saved. But in hell you don't come out. 
You go from hell to the lake of fire, that's just as worse. And you need not to. To get to heaven, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. The same God that has given you the tomatoes, the pumpkins, the pineapples, the corn, the oranges, the same God that has given you the products that are at these tables is able to give you eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. As much as you walk up to the table and say, hey, I'll take that orange. How much? You can step up to God and say, I'll take heaven. How much? Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's how much. As far as the east from the west, your sins can be forgiven. You can be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. You can get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. No religion. You won't find Americans in heaven. There are no Americans. What the hell do you think I am? I'm an American, dude. Well, well, right there. You gotta be born again. That's what you gotta be. The cops are on our way right now, anyway, man. They're disturbing these people. Good. Coming, you must be coming, born coming, again. All right. They need friends killed. Please get out there, brother. Well, I'll tell you what. You be born again, and you can be saved too, sir. You don't know who I am, but I know Jesus, and my name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Forever, as your name could be in the Lamb's Book of Life forever. By the testimony, by the faith, by the merit of Jesus Christ alone, and only Jesus Christ. Your sins can be covered, your sins can be washed, your sins can be put away. Only by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. You be American. But that won't get you into heaven. You be a religion. That will not get you into the gates of heaven. You put your money into a box. That's not going to get you to heaven. But by being born again, by being put in your faith upon Jesus Christ and Jesus of Christ alone, only that will get you into heaven. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. My citizenship has been changed from the world to heavenly by Jesus Christ, who had paid for my sins, who have washed away my sins, and he can wash away yours. He can cleanse you. He can put your name in the last book of life today. You don't know if you have a tomorrow. The wages of sin is death. Who knows when death will come? You may not even see this afternoon. You may not even finish out this morning. Call upon Jesus as your Savior today, now, before it's too late. And if you live 5, 10, 20, 30 years, it's the long-suffering. It's the mercy of God that God is not willing that any should perish. The entrance to God is by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. The salvation of God is written by Jesus Christ. Upon His hands. Upon His feet in the hole that's in his side, upon the thorns that are on his brow, upon his back, 
ripped and beaten upon the place where his hair was in his beard. Upon that cross is salvation. The cross that's in the middle where the Son of God, God hung and died for us. It wasn't to the thief on the left. It wasn't to the thief on the right. They can't save you. It had to be the sinless perfection in the middle. God himself. That's the cross of Jesus. That is your means to be saved. How am I getting to heaven? By the finished work of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. There is nothing else. There is nobody else. There is not anything else. There is not where else. It's upon the cross of Calvary outside of Jerusalem where Jesus Christ hung and died. That is your access to God. Religion did not give themselves for you. Science did not suffer for you. But God manifested in the flesh suffered and died for you. God, Jesus Christ, is the only means approved by God to get to God. Religion is man-made, but Jesus Christ is God-approved. You don't get to God with an ID card. You don't get to God with a registry. You don't get to God with facts and figures. You get to God by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And I know many of you are angry every week. And the pages of the Bible tell me you will be angry. Marvel not if the world hates you. No, it hated me, but still, go out and preach the gospel. You're doing your part, and I'm doing my part. Where do you think God is pleased? The man that obeys and preaches the Bible? Or the people that get angry at the Bible being preached? Now, come on. Those that preach God, does that make God happy? Or those that hate God's preaching, does that God make God happy? Which one? It's a simple question. It's yay or nay. It's not A, B, C, D. It's not true or false. Would God be pleased about Jesus being preached? Or would God be pleased about you hating Jesus? Which one? So what room do you have to believe in anything but Jesus? When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. When the apostles said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. When God says, for I so loved the world that I gave my only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God does not mention religion. He mentions Jesus. It's kind of funny. Look at the religions. As Paul tells us, there are many different Jesuses, if I can say that, in religions. Mormonism. We got a UFO Jesus. Jehovah Witnesses, we got a Jesus who's not God. Catholics, we got a Jesus we eat. Excuse me, sorry. 
Baptist. We got a Jesus that gets wet. And I can go on and on and on. But there's one Jesus that God approves of. And that Jesus is God. And that Jesus is to be received by faith. That Jesus suffered and died on the cross. That Jesus was buried. That Jesus arose again three days and three nights. That Jesus was born of a virgin. That Jesus is Jewish. That Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father right now. That Jesus is coming back for his bride. That Jesus is coming back as a lion of the tribe of Judah. Is that your Jesus? My Jesus grew up from that baby and suffered and died on that cross. Is that your Jesus? Because Paul says there's another Jesus and another Jesus will get you into hell. I got accused a couple of weeks ago. I'm, I'm, I preach about myself, really. It's been Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The Son of God, who is God, who is my Savior, can be your Savior, who is God approved, Jesus Christ. And I don't say that as a cuss. I say that with honor and glory. A name above all names, that is the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Do it now before you die. Because if you bow the knee to Jesus after you die, you'll be going off in the lake of fire that burneth forever. you got to make sure you have the biblical Jesus. You cannot put your faith in religion and be okay. Religion will not save you. Religion will damn you. And again, that loving God, for God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son. There's the love of God, yes. God is love. But when you read John 3.16 in the King James Bible, that love is past tense. There is no more love of God if we reject Jesus. If you tell Jesus no, not, never, I got something better. There is no love of God after you've heard the preaching. When you hear that Jesus saves, and you say, no, there is no love of God. Now, maybe before you heard the preaching, but when you hear preaching that Jesus saves, and you say, no, that's it for the love of God until you believe Jesus Christ. When you hear the preaching of Jesus and you say, no, there's no love. Until you receive Him. If you want the love of God, you've got to receive Jesus Christ because that is, John 3, 16, that is the love of God. How can you get the love of God if you rejected the love of God? I mean, that's like ordering apple cider and saying, don't put no apple in it. I want to go to heaven, but I don't want Jesus. Impossible. Impossible. Because the love of God is Jesus Christ. And you cannot say, God loves me, and you don't have Jesus. Especially after you heard his preaching. There are many of you right now. You scorn this preaching. And then you will have the nerve to say that God loves you. 
Really? How can that be so when Jesus Christ, who is loved of God, who is God, is amplified, is exalted, is preached, is loved, is taught, it, and you say whatever you say against it, and then you turn around and say, well, God loves me. Sorry. You've got to put apples to make apple cider. You've got to have Jesus to be saved. It's that simple. God made salvation so simple anybody could do it. But many go the broad way. Few will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And it's come to a point where he's going to preach, he's going to do 30, 45 minutes, he'll go home. Just let him preach, let him do, he'll go. And before we meet, Lord willing, what if you go off into eternity? What if death comes knocking on your door between now and next week? What if God said, move on? God may tell me, he said, move on, find somewhere else. It's the mercy and grace of God that you're getting the preaching. It's enough that every week you're hearing that Jesus saves. It is God that said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. The only way to get the love of God is the love of God. That's Jesus. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And any excuse against the Son, any answer but receiving the Son, that same God will cast you into hell, Luke 16. That's what people don't like. They don't like a holy, loving God that will put people in hell. But it's true. There are... There are tons and tons of people in hell today that are Bible believers. Too late. There may have been even people who have been here at the farmer's market in hell. I heard them preach every week. Too late. You still got a chance. It's not too late. But the wages of sin is death. That's too late. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And there's one question you've got to ask yourself. What are you relying on for God to get you to heaven? If it's not Jesus Christ, you're not going. I mean Jesus Christ alone, nothing but Jesus Christ. That's it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's it. Nothing more. Anything else added to that is hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. 